So which is better, vintage or new? A little bit of history first. When Hans Wilsdorf embarked on the journey to establish a watch company in 1905, he set forth an ambitious mission, to create the world's finest timepiece. From the very beginning, Rolex's promotional materials proudly highlighted the rigorous testing processes that Wilsdorf's watches underwent, showcasing their precision by surpassing accuracy records. Additionally, they emphasized the watch's remarkable features, such as being waterproof, dustproof, and resistant to magnetic forces, qualities that later became integral to the GMT Master series. In the context of the GMT Master, Rolex's promotional materials confidently assert that if you were boarding the Concorde tomorrow, a Rolex would be the watch of choice, rendering both supersonic passenger jets and mechanical wristwatches indispensable. This bold claim underscores the brand's commitment to excellence and suggests that a Rolex timepiece is not just a watch, it's a testament to uncompromising quality and reliability. The question that arises now is whether the modern GMT Master collections can still uphold Wilsdorf's vision of being the best. As technology and innovation continue to advance, Rolex remains at the forefront of orology, consistently introducing enhancements to its timepieces. The GMT Master series, with its timeless design and cutting-edge features, strives to live up to the lofty standards set by its founder over a century ago, ensuring that each watch is not only a symbol of prestige, but also a testament to precision and durability. To the casual onlooker, Rolex stands as the undisputed king of watchmakers, and the brand's crown logo, along with its unparalleled marketing, reinforces this perception. However, the truth reveals a more intricate narrative. In 1905, the year of Rolex's inception, starting a watch company was a relatively late move. Blancpain, the oldest ticking watch brand, had a head start of almost two centuries, and Omega, one of Rolex's major competitors, had been in the game for over half a century. When lacking the advantage of a long heritage, how does one establish a name? The answer lies in innovation, in doing the unexpected and breaking away from conventional norms. This was the approach taken by a 24-year-old Wilsdorf. In an era when pocket watches were reserved for men and wristwatches, then known as wristlets, were deemed suitable for ladies, Wilsdorf defied these norms. He sought out the smallest movement with optimal performance from Aigler, a company later acquired by Rolex in 2004, and embarked on submitting these wristwatches to major precision awards. This move was groundbreaking because wristwatches had never been entered before, automatically earning them the distinction of being the most accurate. Continuing his innovative approach, he proceeded to develop a headline-grabbing case with unconventional thinking. While water-resistant watches existed, they lacked thoughtful design. Various approaches like push-fit seals, clamping covers, and locking secondary cases were common. Some watches had screw-down bezels, screw-down case backs, or screw-down crowns, but none incorporated all three. The Rolex Oyster case was the pioneering design that brought them together. Even the marketing stunt displaying the Oyster ticking underwater in fishbowls and jewelers' windows wasn't entirely new. The first known waterproof pocket watch was exhibited similarly at the 1851 Great Exhibition in London. Rolex's other innovations followed a similar pattern. The self-winding movement already existed, but Rolex refined it with a freely spinning rotor weight. While perpetual calendars were centuries old, Rolex was the first to create a watch with just the date. Although 24-hour pocket watches were not uncommon, Rolex innovated by combining a 24-hour hand with a standard 12-hour set. Similar to Apple, it's a brand that takes raw, unrefined ideas and combines them to create simple, elegant solutions, the kind that makes you wonder why you didn't think of it yourself. The question arises, is today's Rolex the same innovator as the Rolex of the past? When comparing a 1960s 1675 to a modern 1167-19 BLRO, it might be tempting to see the sleek, glossy finishes of the modern version as a shift from function to form. 
However, technology has surpassed the mechanical wristwatch, placing companies like Rolex in a void between the past and the present. How can you innovate something that's already considered outdated? Such a trivial challenge wouldn't have deterred Wilsdorf in the past, and it certainly won't hinder Rolex now. The difference lies in the fact that, in the absence of a technological pinnacle to uphold long replaced by computing, Rolex can now set its own challenges. In the pursuit of excellence, it can establish its own benchmarks and strive to achieve what was once deemed unattainable. The evolution of the GMT Masters bezel has been a fascinating journey, and it unexpectedly comes down to a seemingly simple component. The initial GMT Master 6542 featured a big light bezel, which proved too fragile, leading to the introduction of the beloved aluminum bezel. However, by 2005, Rolex took a leap forward with the GMT Master 2 116718LN, introducing the first ceramic bezel to a Rolex watch in sleek black. While the ceramic bezel offered remarkable attributes like scratch resistance and color retention, Rolex faced a new challenge in 2013, a two-tone ceramic bezel. The goal was not to join two halves, but to craft two colors seamlessly in a single piece. The transition between colors was tackled with the black and blue 116710 BLN in 2013, paving the way for the ultimate challenge combining red and blue in a single ceramic bezel. The challenge of creating a two-tone ceramic bezel involved a meticulous process. The ceramic bezel begins with a base color, a pale minty green, to which pigment is added. Coloring each half separately posed alignment issues, so Rolex approached it in two steps. For the BLNR, the entire bezel was first colored blue, and then the top half was colored black in the second step. However, this process wouldn't work seamlessly for colors of similar tones, like blue and red, as it would result in an undesirable purple shade. Rolex's innovative solution was to lay the red color first, incorporating some blue in it. When the blue was applied on top, it retained a shade that leaned more towards blue than purple, showcasing Rolex's commitment to precision and innovation in watchmaking. Examining the bezel closely reveals the nuanced incorporation of red and blue, showcasing Rolex's meticulous approach. While some might argue that Rolex today appears to rest on its laurels compared to the past, it's essential to recognize the shifts in the industry and the brand's ability to adapt. In a contemporary landscape, Rolex continues to innovate with watches like the Skydweller, Deep Sea, and GMT Master II proving its commitment to uniqueness without straying from its core principles. Rather than relying on endless limited editions, Rolex pursues thoughtful advancements. And that's the conclusion. Thanks for being part of Venti Chic. Remember to like and comment on the video, and subscribe to our channel for regular updates. Stay tuned for our upcoming videos.